It's the AL Central taking on the East. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the New York Yankees. 2K Sports and Major League Baseball. Broadcasting live Saturday afternoon, Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. Just moments from now, Eric Bedard. He'll be bringing his stuff to the mound to try and put up a W. A great day ahead here at Yankee Stadium with New York City as the backdrop. We thank you for being with us for this day game. Their starter is A.J. Burnett. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. A pretty even matchup right here. Quality right-hander against a quality lineup. And oftentimes we say good pitching beats good hitting. We'll see if that prevails in this one. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzy Guillen's got going. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. And Posednik's batting. Well, Yankees coming in, awful loss. Now in game two of this three-game set, they can even up the series with a win against Chicago. Burnett's pitch, swung on and missed, 0-1. And they were on the losing end of a very long game. A long game, and you hope in extra innings that being at home you can win the game, but makes it even tougher. Swing and a miss on the slider, one out. It seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't yeah, get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. Hot shot towards the hole. Andy steps on first. That's the second out. And it's Paul Canerco now. On his last game came so close to hitting for the cycle. Got the home run and the single and double, but unfortunately just couldn't come up with a triple. This is swung on, lifted to deep right field. It's off the wall and right. Canerco's going for it. And at second base, he's tagged out. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. And the Yankees getting ready to start this one off. And doing the pitching, it'll be Eric Bedard. He's going to start for Chicago. And Steve, what's he got in his mind now as he pitches against these Yankees? Well, sending a good lefty to the mound in this ball game here, but this is a great lineup, a lineup that can really beat up even some of the best pitchers in the game. So he's going to have to be on top of his game in order to do it and rely upon that movement on his pitches. The 1-0 pitch. And that one will head all the way to the backstop for a ball. The pitch. And here's a fastball for a called strike. Two and one. Here's the 2-1. Jeter will take that low. Lifetime 289 off the white side. Three one a fastball, swung on and missed. Full count. Hitting such a mental part of the game and coming off last night when he had three hits, he's got to be feeling good. Back up the middle, and he's on. First batter up. That could be a good sign offensively. And now presented by Pepsi, a look at the Yankees starters. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, every time Alex Rodriguez steps in the batter's box, you expect him to do something special. And today, he's expected to be a factor in this game offensively. He's got powered off fields. He can hit for average. He can steal a... He sends this one in the air towards center. And that one falls in there for a single. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Well, Steve, the thoughts on a fielder here. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And it's Mark Teixeira now. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. Here's the pitch. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Teixeira now will cut that swing down. Now his two RBIs helped contribute to the oh. offense in last night's ball game. And it holds at 0-2. Oh. And this one goes to the backstop. Both runners move up. 
And they'll just have to sit on this one so everybody's safe. And Teixeira fights off another during this at bat. Well, anytime you're behind in the count, and in this case, the one-two count, you have to maintain that focus. You have to really be dialed into what the pitcher's throwing. You have to get in that defensive mode, though, and make sure you can foul it off. And that's what he did there to keep himself going. Yeah. Uh, strike three, Mark oh, Teixeira didn't so get a hack at that one and sets him down. Well, he gets the first out of the inning right there. Now let's see if he can continue to bear down and work his way out of this jam and keep the score tied. Runners on second and third, one down. Comes out swinging for the fences, but ends up with a strike one. Rodriguez taking that one. It's in there. He gets two quick strikes on the hitter, but he can't be too selective now. He's got to go right at him. Line shot into center field. And that one's down, so the Yankees will get one. Not in time, and he scores. Two run single on that one. Nice two strike approach by the hitter. A high pitch up in the zone. Able to fight it off and make contact and put it in play. And Jorge Posada up. And with the lead, this lineup looks as though they're ready to do some more damage. Uh, still a ways to go, but pitching's going to catch up here. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. Oh, Jorge Posada, not fooled by that pitch to get the count even. It's very early, so it may not stand up, but uh, far better to be playing with the edge. Well, that's right, Gary. I mean, they're going to try to use that edge to add some padding to this lead. That's a big swing and a miss for Jorge Posada. Strike three, he's out of there. The clock at 79 on K-Cam, and pretty decent movement on that breaking ball. This is a tough pitch to handle, but he takes the swings anyway. And Johnny had to do that, right? Well, it would have been a strike regardless, but sometimes you got to make the pitcher work a little bit harder out there for the good of the team. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. A big part of the offense in last night's game with four hits. They'd love to see it again today. No balls, one strike. Here's Bedard. And it's 0-2. Swisher, contact time. Still 0-2. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. The throw, not in time, in there at third. Courtesy of State Farm, here's the leaderboard for teams with runners in scoring position. Best batting in. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Blue Jays. Third, the Yankees. Red Sox, fourth. And fifth best, the A's. But both these teams have gotten the job done with runners in scoring position, so the key will be for the pitchers not to put runners in scoring position. And Curtis Granderson to bat. Here's the delivery. Head up the middle. Base hit through the infield. Runner should score. Out at third as they tag him. They got a nice head start right there. The offense early. The Yankees lead three to nothing. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. White Sox. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. Well hit towards the middle. Jeter. So Quinton is retired. A lot of tough teams in the American League. Let's take a look at where the Yankees sit right now in the rankings. First in walks, second in ERA. And this power pitching staff ranks number two in strikeouts. Quality stuff, getting a lot of swings and misses. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now. We'll have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Beckham uh, made his debut in June, and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. It certainly did, and you talk to White Sox personnel, and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. 
and he only got to see three pitches. Now, unhittable pitches, but he saw them nonetheless. Boy, that's a tough at bat for the hitter. He's got to walk away almost before he even got there. And Alex Rios up. That one's grabbed. Side retired. And a quick inning for A.J. Burnett. Second hit for the New York Yankees. Designated hitter, number 18, Nick Johnson. Bedard gets set and delivers. One. First pitch of fastball. That's in there for a strike. Well, the hitter's got to regret that one. He missed his pitch right down the heart of the plate. Four-seam fastball. That hurts. Ground ball headed for the middle. And that'll set down Johnson. Boy, he made that throw a split second before he lost control of the body. Well, the key was he kept his eye on the target the entire time. Big smile. He got that one done. Gardner at the plate. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple hits. That one's too low. Bedard missing. Well, that fastball right there just missed, just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. And Gardner retired. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. And Derek Jeter up in the top ten in hits. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. The hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0-2. Swing and a hit by Jeter. And it's going to be Quentin. And that'll retire the side, caught by Rios. And a good defensive. None other than Ozzie. That's Ozzie Guillen. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. It's going to be Pruszynski. He's the league leader in ribbies. Burnett's pitch swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. This one towards Granderson. And he gets over and grabs it with the left. Third baseman, number 25. And in the batter's box, it's Tian, six year player. Burnett sets and throws. Swing and a drive, deep left center. Two men have been put away. We hope you can tune in for next Thursday's game. We'll see Torrey Hunter and the Los Angeles Angels. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. Be sure to tune in 7 o'clock Eastern. Well, Gary, fans are going to want to tune into that one because I think that's got a chance to be a heck of a ball game. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. Three big hits in that game last night. And They'd love to get that contribution again today. And it's 0 and 2. Kotze just trying to punch one here. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Oh. Curveball too far inside, a little hop to get out of the way. Well, that's a wake up call right there. You think, oh, I'm going to go up, have a nice leisurely at bat. Not so fast. Look out. You're out. And that one is swung on and missed by Kotze. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Yankees still enjoying this lead. And so Robinson Cano set to go. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. And Cano is retired. Chance to view the teams who have crossed the plate the most times this year. Courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox number one. Blue Jays in second, the Red Sox third, Yankees fourth, and for the Orioles, they are fifth. Now both these teams have had great success this year scoring runs. And it's going to put a lot of pressure on the pitching staff to try to limit this offense. It could turn into a slugfest. On the ground to second. Beckham. And that'll send down to Shearer. Number 13. Alex Rodriguez at the plate two away. He had a two-run single in his last appearance. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs, and 
a major factor in this offense. It's Alex Rodriguez at the plate two away. Career 370 number against Bedard. Bedard gets set and delivers. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. So that brings Jorge Posada to the plate. Well, two quick outs in the inning. You think maybe this is one of those quick innings and the other team gets in and they get some momentum. But he keeps ending alive with that base hit. Well, Jorge Posada is in one word, a winner. Every year he seems to be in baseball, his team is in the post. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And that's going to do it in this half inning. No runs on a base hit. They leave one man on at first. Here's a familiar face, Isaac Guillen looking up. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. Ball. And Burnett, too high. But Gary, they just have not been able to mount any offense here today. I mean, one hit into the fourth inning, and, and obviously they haven't scored any runs, so they're going to have to change their approach right, at the plate. 1 0 pitch is a fastball, swung on and missed. 1 1. Well, that's some kind of pitch, and you set up the target on the outside corner, and he paints the black with it. Awfully tough when you have that kind of location. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And Alexi Ramirez is a guy who can do a lot of things offensively. Kind of like an Alfonso Soriano guy. A guy who can hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he can also hit for a high average. Burnett's pitch swung on and missed 0 and 1. Alexei Ramirez uh, first seen in the 06 World Baseball Classic. He had an impressive series. A lot of scouts uh, hoped and the White Sox were the ones that got him. When well, he started out in 2008 as their second baseman 2009 he got switched to shortstop his more natural position and he seemed to handle it very well. Well he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Well, a good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? It's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 and 1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And Canerco's got himself a single. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Look now at the hottest bat. State Farm, our leaderboard for the highest batting average over the last 10 games. All of these guys, quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quinton. Fastball, look out! That one is right at his head. To be a successful Major League pitcher, you cannot be afraid to pitch inside. That's a good example of it right there. Look out. And it's in time from his knees to get the out. And the flowing along with outs is A.J. Burnett. And the Yankees, it'll be there. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crutt bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And so Nick Swisher leading it off. Great season, top 10 in RBIs. Pitcher gets a little help right there. A dirt pitch for a swinging strike. Well, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. If the hitter pulls the trigger on this, he's got a chance to drive the ball. He opened up, was out in front, but the inside changeup can be dangerous. Still 0-2. And, and he fouls another one off. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. Able to set him down there, chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. Okay, Cam's going to show us the four-seam fastball here. And Curtis Granderson up. Base is empty with one away. First count on Granderson. Here it comes. 
Watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike. Uh, Curtis Granderson is a guy that the 2009 Tigers desperately needed to have a big year if they were going to win. They came so close. But I think in 2010, Curtis Granderson is going to turn his season around. He did hit 30 homers, but he was awful against left-handed pitching. That will improve in 2010. And it holds at 0-2. One of the problems for Curtis Granderson in 9 with those left-handers eating him up, he hit only 249. I like the one thing to keep an eye on in Yankee Stadium, uh, his new ballpark. He's got a real chance to hit some home runs there with that short porch in right field. Well, the battle starts when you step in the batter's box, but the real battle starts when the count is 0-2, and, and that's where he sees himself. But give him credit, he's keeping himself alive by fouling off that tough 0-2 pitch on the outside part of the plate. Let's see if he can make the pitcher make a mistake. Line drive, and it's caught by Ramirez. Here's Nick Johnson. Johnson. Lifetime numbers 313 off the White Sox. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. There's a smash towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Nothing doing here in this half inning. Four innings in the books here at Yankee Stadium. And Beckham's in the box. Called out on strikes in his last appearance. Gordon Beckham. Here's the first pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. And one of the top ten averages right now. Alex Rios. No one out and a runner on first. And he starts Rios out. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Consistency, professionalism. He never seems to give up in at bat, Gary. He's so locked in this year. To right center. This one into the alleyway. Should be extra bases. There's the throw. Around third. He's going to try for it. And he crosses the plate all the way from first base. Openings for this lineup offensively. Don't give it to him now because they are hot. It knocks in a run. Let's take a look at our Pepsi WPA chart. Nice piece of hitting right there. He manages to drive that high 0-1 pitch for a base hit. Good patience, good pitch recognition. Sure looked like the hitter decided he wasn't going to get behind 0-2. He was going to wail. Uh, he was aggressive, no question about it. Got a pitch he could handle and took advantage. He swings and nails a liner. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, anytime you have two hits in a game, it will build confidence, and he's carrying it over into this game. Martian looking to knock in a run. One of the best batting averages in the league. First one to tee in. Here's the up the middle. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? And Rios comes in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Designated hitter, number 30, Mark Patsy. Well, the hitter makes an adjustment going down on the pitch at the bottom of the strike zone and drives it here. And you get a run scored if you're in that at bat. What you want to do is make contact. He did, and it pays off. Burnett sets and throws. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. And here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a miss, and he's behind 0-2. Well, I tell you what, for two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. Hard ground at a short. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. And Pierzynski comes in. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, this guy's completely lost it out there now. They've strung together five consecutive hits against him. Clearly, he's run out of gas. And for Sednik's batting, definitely some clutch production we're seeing out of this lineup, Steve. That's a good piece of hitting we saw right there, Gary. Quality at bat, coming up with a big hit to tie this one up. There are big at bats, and that was one of them. 
Strike started off the at bat 0-1. Up the middle. With that, they'll hold the runners at first and second. Up to the plate. What a great Perfect. snag the right there to get the out. Tremendous Sandy. athletic. Oh. Alexi Ramirez. Runners at first and second. It'll be Alexei Ramirez up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Swung on and hit. This one to Granderson. Two retired here. One event to look forward to will be next Friday. New York Yankees are roadbound. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. Be sure to tune in 7 o'clock Eastern. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. And he starts Canerco out. A shot up the middle. And another hit. Oh, my. This clinic's just beginning. And he scores, and they take the lead. Stepping Hitting? The well, they say it's contagious. It is contagious here right in this ball game because they can't be stopped. Carlos Quinton. A productive hit right there. Let's see the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. Well, a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. Here's Carlos Quinton with two outs and two on. Now, Steve, you get that feeling right now this offense is not going to be stopped. They've got themselves a lead late. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And Katze crosses the plate. Stepping oh, this offense. Every the opportunity they get, they Second manufacture base. something out of it. 15, Gordon Beckham. Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in his swing to get that low ball to be able to pick up the hit. And out on the mound, we've got Alfredo Aceves. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Hot shot towards the hole. And Canerco will score. Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. Number 51. Opposite field hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. And Alex Rios up. And the offense. This is swung on. Lifted to deep right field. And Swisher puts that away to retire the side. They've struck back to take the lead with an enormous offensive inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Bottom of the order to get things started. A bit of sunshine, few clouds floating around. That's uh, the weather-wise situation here today. Red Gardner. Gardner at the plate. Bedard gets set and delivers. Taps this one foul off to the left. Plays off the change up. Good pitch, but it's one and one. Well, a lot of guys would swing at that pitch right there, that change up down in the strike zone, but the hitter luckily stayed off that one. And he looks at the slider in there, and it's one and two now. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. Strike three called on the fastball. What a way. Well, Gary, if when I were playing, if I got fastballs right down the middle, when I had two strikes, I might have made it to the big leagues. That's exactly right. <laughs> and Derek Jeter up. 
Well, anytime you have the label of captain of the New York Yankees, there's a special thing that goes with that, and Derek Jeter is the epitome of what this team's all about. They're a no-nonsense group, although Nick Swisher kind of changed that a little bit in 2009, but he's the leader in the clubhouse and on the field for this team. He sets the tone for everything the Yankees do. That retires Jeter. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. That's six in a row that he set down. And Robinson Cano to bat. He gets across the plate. He leads the entire division and runs. And he tries to lay off, does, but it's a called strike, nothing in one. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Throws to first in time. That's three down. No hits, nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. The White Sox still ahead. Leading it off, A.J. Pruszynski. He's the league leader in ribbies. A.J. Pruszynski. First pitch. Hit hard on the ground to short. Jeter. So Pruszynski retired. And here's Martian. In the top ten and hits. One out. Faces him. On the way. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, he's getting a job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. Hard ground at a short, and it gets through. Not bad. Two for three today. Now That'll bring up Mark Conce. Well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well. Got himself that one out base hit. One out, runner on at first. Here's the pitch. Swing, hot shot. And that's a base hit. Conce on it first. Now this is a great situation for some White offense. Sox. Left fielder. Well, you know he's at an all-time high coming into this game. A big win in their last game. He had three hits to contribute. Things are going great for him right now. And Posednik's batting. He's two for three, lifetime off of Seves. The pitch. And that's another foul ball. Now Posada sets up. Swung on, missed, curveball, struck him out, two down. He's got a shot of getting out of this now. Big time. Now he's got two down. He's only one out away from working out of this jam. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Line drive. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. The White Sox six, the Yankees three. A look there at Joe Girardi. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. That one's too low. Bedard missing. Well, anytime you have a good fastball and you can keep it down in the zone, around the knees or lower, it's great location and believe me, very difficult to hit. That's over for a strike, two and one. Hitter's eyes light up when the ball's coming into the top of the strike zone. He didn't pull the trigger, it's a strike. Hit sharply towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. You want to talk about settling in? How about retiring eight hitters in a row? I think he settled in. And now the pitch to Rodriguez. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. Well, he didn't throw this one where he wanted to as the ball just kind of moves in on the plate and gets a piece of the hitter. So that brings Jorge Posada to the plate. Here's the pitch to Posada. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. 
He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one, and he gets in for the strike. Foul ball behind home plate. And another foul ball. And here's the delivery. And Jorge Posada goes down swinging. Strike three. Here's the four seam fastball coming at you. KK, get a better look. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought uh, the timing that time just didn't seem to be there in the at bat. Well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. Fastball is high, 1 0. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher, took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. Swing and a miss by Swisher. Count knotted up. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And that's going to do it in this half inning. So they can't push any across here in this half. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Number 14, Paul Canerco. Pitch on the way. That swung on and a liner here. And Canerco retired. Here's the Yankees schedule, what it looks like in May. One game left for the White Sox, that's tomorrow. And after that, they will be home against the Orioles, have to deal with Nick Markakis and the O's lineup. A team that bested them in the last series between the two. That's a three-game series. Then they head off for a series against the Red Sox on the road and Adrian Beltre in their lineup. That's a team they beat pretty soundly the last time around. Swing and a line drive. And he gets that one down, his second hit, two for four today. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside, go the other way. Here is the opportunity for the youngster, Gordon Beckham. Now the first pitch. Swings and misses the slider, 0-1. He deals, headed for the middle, and it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. And to take a look at the teams doing their best to get on base, brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox, the Yankees second, the Blue Jays third, the Twins fourth, and it's the Red Sox number five. Well, you kind of expected these two teams, if you've watched them all year, to be amongst the league leaders in on-base percentage, and that's exactly what they are. They make the pitcher work. Some people might think, well, this is boring baseball. Swing liner back up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Quinton around third, headed for the plate. Well, that's hit number 15 and then for that one. And boy, you get 15 hits in a game. The manager can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. The first pitch, line shot into center field, and it gets down as Quentin crosses the plate. The throw, there's two. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. White Sox, third baseman, number 25, Mark Tian. Well, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches or they're just figuring him out. And here's Martian. Well, this, there's a ball. Hit well. A high drive deep into center field. Say goodbye. A three-run homer. With that three-run homer, they just extended their lead. I'll take a look at this. This pitch coming high and tight. One of the toughest balls for a hitter to catch up to. You have to have a quick bat. He had one. And we'll see if the pitcher can adjust after giving up that one. That's a that's a big blast. Three RBIs. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Number 30. 
Base is empty, one out. Here's the first pitch to Katze. There's a bullet towards third. Oh, wow, another hit. They just won't quit. He's trying for second. And that's going to bring Scott Posadnik up. Struck out swinging last time. One down, runner at first. On the way. Smash towards the middle. One and two. They got both of them that time. So they add five more to the total and widen that gap. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And it's Curtis Granderson now to lead it off. One for two in the ball game. Number 28, Curtis Granderson. Fresh count on Granderson. Here it comes. Fastball and this is away. One and oh. Well, Jerry, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get out right now. Fastball just misses and he falls behind. Two and oh. Here it comes. Two oh. Two and one the count. Swung on, line softly towards right center. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. So Nick Johnson will come to the plate. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can... Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And that'll set down Johnson. Boy, I, you might have been able to get the out at second, at least getting the lead runner. But at least they got the sure out at first. Gardner. First pitch on the way. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Two down. Now up to the plate for the New York Yankees. Shortstop. Runner at second chance for Derek, Derek Jeter at the plate. Jeter. Grounded out his last time through. Bedard gets set and delivers. Slider misses badly with it. One and oh. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning and. You know, they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game in his fourth plate appearance. And Granderson scores. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Well, this is great patience at the plate. He let the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. Swung on, that is hit. So they score once on two hits, one man left. Yankees make a push, but they got a long way to go. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swung on, line to right field. Now and that'll bring up Paul Konerko. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's First season base. so far. Number Let's 14. take a look at where he ranks Paul compared to Canerco. everybody else. Fourth in doubles, fourth in hits, and as you can see, that ability to make contact is there, hitting for a very high average, ranked among the top ten hitters in the league. And he starts Konerko out. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two-seam fastball. Line towards second. Over to second for one. Decides not to try for the double play. Hangs on to it. Well, they get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And Kevin Gregg gets ready to throw as the Yankees turn to him in relief. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, let's see if he can have a great game. Gregg gets set and delivers. That one swung on its line. Jeter able to pull that one in. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past 10, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox, the Red Sox in second, the Angels third, the Yankees fourth, and for the Orioles, they are fifth.
Well, there are stretches during the season when it, every team struggles to score runs, but these two teams right now in these last 10 games have found a way to be able to throw runners across the board. They're doing it in every single way conceivably possible. They're doing it with power. They're doing it with speed. They're complete offenses, and the pitchers better be good or else their ERA is going to skyrocket. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a splitter to retire the side. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. Now the Yankees. This is the bottom half of the eighth. And it's Mark Teixeira now. He'll lead it off. Grounded out last time. Mark Teixeira. Bedard gets set and delivers. Swing and lined up the middle. And that one drops in for him. Wow, that is his first base hit. It has been a struggle to get. And that'll bring up Alex Rodriguez. A couple of RBIs thus far. Well, they find themselves behind right now, but not because of his at-bat. His two runs driven in have been a big part of this game. A runner on first, no out. And now the pitch to Rodriguez. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. One away, and he'll go back to first. Well, they followed the advanced scout reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. And it's Jorge Posada in the box now. Runner at first with one down. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Uh, it's not surprising they're going to the bullpen now. It's, I just thought maybe they waited a little bit too long. Should have gone and gotten them a little bit earlier. Here's the pitch. Taps this one foul to the right. Oh, that is hit well off the bat of Posada. Two away. And here are the standings on the Central Division as we move into May. Brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. Second place, the Royals. Third belongs to the Twins. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. Here's one that's in there called Strike. Uh, Gary, I think right now that... Uh, You've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, they just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdowns there. You only need four outs left to win this ballgame. Still 0-2. Trying to get him to chase a slider, but it's 1-2. Fouled off. And he looks at a fastball that's in there. Side retired. No runs on a base hit. They leave one man on at first. The White Sox maintaining their lead. And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. You know, Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing. So interesting move. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Kevin Gregg, a strike two there. And now we'll see if he goes right at him. Swing and ooh, look out. Line drive that shatters the bat. So Rios is set down. Let's take a second to view the top overall power hitters in the league on the State Farm leaderboard. Well, this is a list of guys that when they get in there, they're looking to do some damage to really hurt the opposition. Looking to drive the ball. It's not just about contact. It's about hard contact. One out, nobody on. First pitch, here it comes. Hot shot towards the hole.
That brings up Mark Tian. We're heading into May. This is a look at the standings for the East, brought to you by State Farm. Yankees in first place. It's the Blue Jays in second. Orioles third place. Fourth place belongs to the Red Sox. And it's the Rays in the last slot. Well, they came into the season with great expectations, as they typically do in New York. But sometimes things let down. Not this year. Yankees playing Yankee baseball, sitting on top and making their fans very happy. And Greg gets him swinging for the first strike. Well hit towards the middle. And there's one. But he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. He's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. And Mark Kotze up. Looking at the numbers last year, he hit 200 against the Yankees. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And that's a base hit. Kotze on it first. Coming to bat. We well, talk about a guy who's just wearing side. out the opposition. That's a four Number hit day for him. He is Scott locked in. Ascended. And for Sudnick's batting, we get another shot after hitting into that double play last time up. Greg gets set and delivers. And this is bounced foul to the left side. Lined up the middle, Jeter. And he'll step on the bag. That'll do it. They pick up no runs on two hits and straight. In the dugout, former player, manager now, Joe Girardi. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Steve, what do you think his strategy is going to be against this Yankees lineup? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right here, and you know it's about power because of his size. But it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that make him overall effective. Jenks with a delivery. Call strike two. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning, and they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. Slider, that's taken. Strike three, one away. I've right, got a chance to take a look at the slider again. Number eighteen. That pitch certainly not lacking movement, John. Well, it's controlled movement, and that's why he's able to throw it so effectively to catch guys looking like he did in that at bat. One out, base is empty. And Johnson ready for the first pitch. The pitch fielded by Ramirez, and that'll set down Johnson. Uh, down to their final out right here, Gary. So, made it looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. And this misses 1-0. Now the 1-0 pitch. Ball two. The 2-0 pitch. He looks at that fastball. Called strike. 2-1. Oh. The 2-1 offering. Swings and grounds this one foul. Wide a third. And here's the pitch. Not a pretty pitch. No damage. Oh. Payoff pitch. That misses ball four. That is a guy you do not want to put on base. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to have quality at bats, get that pitch count up. And I tell you what, he worked this pitcher. It's, it's going to be tough for him to get this next hitter out after working that walk on so many pitches. And a grounder is at the last out. And that'll do it, everybody. That's out number three. This ball game over. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. A dominating performance, Gary. Now we award our Pepsi Clutch performer.
But you know, Gary, when someone gets on a hot streak like this, all you can do is sit back, tip your hat, and watch the show. He was spraying the ball all over the field, and one just happened to leave the ballpark. That'll make you the Pepsi Clutch Performer of the game just about every time. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play. Great day for baseball here at 2K Sports. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crutch, Steve Phillips, and our great 2K Sports crew. We wish you a great rest of the day or night, wherever you may be in baseball. Today.